Antes que me llevaran al hospital, un oficial me dijo que ese señor Trump no quería mujeres embarazadas ni mujeres con hijos, nada de eso quería. Que mejor me abortara el niño. The Trump administration's immigration crackdown on the southern border is expanding. President Trump with a harsh message for migrants and asylum seekers. Our country is full, can't take you anymore. So turn around, that's the way it is. The Trump administration has put forth a set of policy changes aimed at their racist goal of limiting the access of immigrants of color to the United States across the border. If you look at what's marching up, that's an invasion. That's not, that's an invasion. And in the meantime, attempting to dismantle the asylum system that was set in place in post-World War II, when nations across the world came together, including the United States, to recognize that there was systems needed to ensure that people fleeing their home countries weren't returned or rejected into situations of extreme danger. Asylum seekers show up to a port of entry anywhere along the border, they're going to be rejected by a CBP officer and told to get on a list or just you know, tell them to come back at another time or even things like asylum is no longer available to them. That's under a broad policy known as metering, uh, where CBP illegally turns away people at ports of entry. If you are processed or you do cross in between a port of entry and are apprehended, you're now subjected to what's called the Migrant Protection Protocols, MPP, which is a program that forcibly returns people to Mexico to face ongoing dangers. People have been raped, kidnapped, extorted, and that policy is designed to prevent them from returning to the U.S. for a hearing before an immigration judge. And llegando aquí a Juárez, estaban dos, dos hombres vestidos de policía y nos pararon. Nosotros le planteamos la situación a los policías, pero ellos, ellos no sé qué habrá pasado porque en ese momento ellos nos agarraron, daban así con unas capuchas de negro, ahí nos quitaron dinero, teléfonos y todo. The administration has attempted to ban eligibility for asylum for the vast majority of people arriving on the border, including a ban that would require everyone to apply first in Mexico and be denied before being eligible for asylum. Mexican officials simply don't have uh, the capacity or, or in some instances the willpower to, to ensure migrant safety. There's already been over 50,000 asylum seekers returned under the MPP program alone. There's an estimated close to 30,000 other migrants stuck on metering lists across the border. It's a massive population that Mexico simply doesn't have, you know, the resources to protect. Me vine por discriminación ante mí, por ser gay. Decidí venirme para Estados Unidos y resulta ser que llego a Estados Unidos y lo que hacen es que me mandan para México. Y aquí está peor la cosa más bien. Every single migrant is extremely vulnerable in Mexico, particularly along the border. The streets of Nuevo Laredo are often called Los Caminos de Carteles, the streets of the cartels. Highly coveted smuggling routes, now a dumping ground for migrants. You know, we've seen cases of young women raped after return by CBP, kidnapped, disappeared. Groups like LGBTQ populations, pregnant women and others don't have access to needed protections and resources in Mexico. We're seeing a lot of flu. Coast living conditions don't help. The change in the weather doesn't help. We're having a lot of kids with high fevers. But everything in these situations is amplified. You can't treat things the same way that you do in the United States as you do here. The bottom line is DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, is systematically returning people to known dangers, all in an effort to prevent them from asserting their right to seek asylum in the United States and accessing any form of due process. The counsel that they are given are a piece of paper with contact information for a handful of organizations that represent immigrants in border regions on the U.S. side of the border. Most of those organizations can't take cases of people that are in MPP because they can't travel to Mexico. They can't keep in touch with their clients because they're inside vulnerable and dangerous circumstances in Mexico and constantly having to move to stay alive. That is a purposeful design of the MPP system is to keep people away from legal counsel. It's hard. It's hard to plan your entire day because even though there's very little distance between us, I mean, we're still entering another country. It frankly, it could be several hours. It could be one, two, three hours. And that, yeah, you don't usually factor that in um, as an attorney, that commute time of waiting on the bridge.
I think it's incumbent on every person in the United States to reflect on whether the United States is a country who is living up to its supposed values. I think we put a lot of weight behind the idea that the U.S. is a country of immigrants, and I think the racism and white supremacy that has come into power in this government is playing out very clearly on the border in the brutalization of immigrants of color, and we all need to consider whether that is you know, a system that the United States should be propagating.